So welcome to another lab video for grade 9 advanced science or for grade 11 chemistry. I'm Mr. Patnode. And I'm Ms. Watts. Um, so we are going to be doing today an experiment called flame tests. If you're in grade 9 advanced science, you can turn to that in your science booklets in the elements and compounds unit. A flame test involves taking a compound, an ionic compound, a salt, and dissolving it in water dipping a piece of metal wire made of, in this case, nickel chromium alloy, a nichrome wire, into the salt solution, and then putting that wire into a burner flame and seeing characteristic colors. Notice that the flame itself, which is burning methane gas right now, natural gas, gives us a blue colored flame. If you just put a piece of metal into that flame, it'll turn yellowish um, after a few moments. So a blue color like this is just the flame by itself, maybe some flashes of yellow in it. A piece of metal in the flame would end up causing a yellow color if it were left there. As we put these salts in the flames, you're gonna see characteristic colors produced, and you wanna write down the colors you see, or the colors we tell you, um, that are corresponding to each of the metals that are in the salts. All right, so Ms. Watts, you can begin. We're gonna go down elements in the first column on the periodic table, group one. We'll look at lithium, sodium, potassium, salts. Then we'll go to group two, calcium, strontium, and barium salts. And then we'll use a transition metal, a copper salt. All right, so the first one that we're gonna look at is lithium nitrate. Um, and so this uh, solution, it has lithium nitrate dissolved in water. And so the idea here is that the characteristic color will be due to the lithium metal. So you can see in the video the wire that's been dipped. And there you can see a very nice characteristic color being produced in the flame. I'll let you record in your own data table what you see. For one or two of these, the colors may, a little, may be a little ambiguous. And if that's the case, Ms. Watts and I will tell you what you should see if it weren't clear in the video. Now, now Ms. Watts, that was lithium nitrate. Um, we want students to understand that it was the metal, the lithium, that caused the color. We have another lithium salt there, a lithium chloride salt. Could you try that one for us? Um, if this lithium chloride has the same color as a lithium nitrate, then that'll sort of convince me that it was the lithium causing the color, not the chloride or the nitrate. Okay, here we go. So this is lithium chloride, hold it in there, and there you go. You can see some yellow, which is from the, from the wire itself, but if you look around the edges of that, of that yellow, you can see that there's some of that same reddish color. And you can try it one more time, and maybe just really hear a little bit of sizzling as the uh, hot metal goes back in the water. So hold it just on the edge of the flame this time. We'll see if that helps a little bit. Yeah, so the, the, there we go. So you can see some reddish color right there. we go, on the edges of the flame there. Very nice. And that, that bright yellow you see is, again, the color when the wire itself gets really hot. So we ignore that, that yellow you saw. So it was the reddish color that we saw, the same for lithium nitrate and lithium chloride. Some would say crimson, a fancy word for a bright, deep red. All right, I'll let you take over the response. Okay, so the next uh, salt that we're going to look at is sodium nitrate. Um, so again, it's the sodium metal that's going to be producing the characteristic color this time. Okay, so when I look at that, it might be a little bit hard to see from the video. It's sort of an orangey color. Yeah, it's, it's usually described as a, as a bright yellow orange or a very bright yellow orange. Okay. Try one more. Sure, we'll do sodium chloride. We're not going to test two of every one, but we'll do a couple of these. So this time, sodium chloride, table salt, dissolved in water. And there's that same very deep yellowy-orange color. Right? Mm -hmm. If you've ever driven at night, you may have seen some lamps at night, street lights, that cast a yellow light instead of a normal white light those lamps have sodium vapor in them. They're called sodium vapor lamps, and they cast that yellow light, the same as what we've seen here. Okay, our next salt is potassium nitrate. 
This one's hard to see well, so we, we may need to describe what students should see as we do this. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Well, there we saw just at the very beginning. I can see something on the very edge of the flame. Now it's starting to look more yellowy, but what color do you think you saw just on the very edge of the flame? Just for a, there it was again. There it is, just on the very left of the flame. Kind of looks. How would you describe that, Miss Watts? So I see sort of a light lilac-colored purple. Yeah, lilac or purpley pinkish color. So well, that was potassium salts. So let's move to column two, the group number two, the alkali metals. So what are we going to start with? So this one is going to be a calcium chloride. So calcium is the metal. Looks kind of similar to the sodium, but do you see any differences to it? Maybe a little bit of a darker orange. Yeah, I think I'd say the same thing. The, the sodium was a bit more yellowy. This one was a bit darker orange, I think. And then moving down that column on the periodic table, underneath calcium is strontium. So we're going to use strontium chloride. Getting from the bit, there we go. So, well, some of that orangey color is probably the wire itself. Can we dip it again? again that one was a little bit. You saw, I saw a little bit of color that I wanted to see, and then it kind of became yellow orange. There, again, it just flashed there just for yeah. a moment. Why don't we try the strontium nitrate, which is right next to it on, on our bench here? Maybe this one will be a little bit better. So that orangey yellow again is that is the result of the wire. There was another color just very briefly in there. If you hold it there, just yeah, let's dip it again one more time. We may have to give up on this one, but hold it there just for a sec. Just a uh, Yeah, no, it's getting mostly orangey yellow, which is that wire itself. The, so it's supposed to produce a, a reddish color. And I think if you, if there was just very brief moments of red in the flame. All right, so let's, let's go down. Next is going to be... So next is barium chloride. So on the periodic table, barium is another alkali metal. Yeah, that was very nice. Uh, what are you seeing with your with your eyes, Miss Watts? I'm looking at the video, Miss Watts is. So I saw at... a nice kind of limey colored green. Limey green. Yeah, I, I'd say a yellowy green. Yeah. Why don't we try one more? The barium nitrate this time. So another barium salt. Yeah, that one looked more greenish at the very beginning. Yeah, little flashes of greenish yellow. Yeah, okay. And we have one last salt. So we're going to move to the transition metal family, the middle section of the periodic table. We're going to use copper salts. So which salt is this? So this is copper nitrate. In solution, it's a nice blue color. So I'm seeing flashes of, there we go, a very nice blue-green. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We try one more time. We have another salt beside the copper chloride salt. Uh -huh. Yeah. As Ms. Wass was mentioning, when copper salts are dissolved in water, the solution looks blue. The flame, there we go, very nice. A very nice greenish color, greenish-blue color to the, to the copper flame test. So, so one very common application of these flame tests would be fireworks. The colors that you see in fireworks are the result of adding small amounts of different salts to produce the desired effects that you, that you, that you see in the exploding fireworks. Some people also have fireplaces where they buy pre-treated firewood. Have you ever seen that? Yep, pre-treated firewood, or you could even get little packages of like a salt that you can put onto your firewood and it would produce different colors. Personally, I like to see a fire that looks like a fire. <laughs> I personally don't want my fireplace looking red and green and orange and stuff like that. But for some people, that's kind of cool. All right, so we're going to put three last uh, flame tests here for you. And we want you to identify what these were. 
So of all the salts we've seen today, we just need to identify which metal is in each of these flame tests. So Ms. Watch is going to pick one of them, we'll put it in the flame, and we want you to, to see uh, what it was. Okay. So here's the first unknown. You have to guess which metal was producing this color. We'll try it one more time. So that's the first unknown. Very, very sh short-lived color there, but what would you think that was? So I saw a yellowy green color there, I don't know. So why don't we try another one? Now, if you guessed barium, you were right. That was a barium salt. So here's unknown number two. Guess which metal is in this salt. Very nice color. So what metal would be causing that? If you guessed lithium, you were correct. That was a lithium salt. And now we'll do one last one. Okay, so here's the third unknown. These colors, if you're a grade nine student, are characteristic properties of the elements. So what element that we saw today would be causing that color? If you guessed copper, you were correct. That was a copper flame test. All right, so those are flame tests. They can be used to identify metals that are in um, salts. In our sludge tests in grade nine, that's, that's one possible technique we could use in a sludge test. If you thought you had some sodium chloride or some sodium nitrate, you could perform a little flame test uh, to test that. And you could ask Ms. Watts or myself for some help if you would like to try that in your last day of sludge tests. So good luck. Thank you very much for tuning in.